We'll take our text from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6, beginning at verse 5. John 6, 5. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? That phrase, there's a lad here, jumps out. In fact, when they learned that these children were going to sing, even though for the most part they're too young to care what I say, and I, I still felt like there's a lad here. And sometimes I do hear. But whether they hear or not, there's a boy here, there's a girl here, there's a a teen here, Mm -hmm. there's a man here, there's a woman here. In this account, we have different components. We have Jesus. He's the central figure of every account. account. We see that he went over the Sea of Galilee and he, uh, he was the one who knew the solution and would provide the solution. But as he came across, uh, many followed him, the multitudes we see. So there's another component of this account, the multitudes. They followed him because they saw the miracles that he had done. Some of these had experienced those miracles. And when one experiences a touch of the Lord, there's a natural tendency to want to follow the Lord. Yeah. And we're thankful that we can follow the Lord as best we can. Amen. The call came, and by the grace of God, we answered. And we simply have been striving to do what the Lord would have us do from that time until now. Yeah. So that's what the multitude Uh, somewhat was doing. Those who had been healed um, certainly had uh, an interest in following Jesus. Those who were part of the crowd were just amazed. It seemed to be the thing to do. So they followed the Lord. And we've seen that in in history when there have been different uh, revivals, uh, renewed uh, interest in serving God and attending church, uh, an awakening, even national awakenings. I was thinking here uh, of the days of D.L. Moody when he, as an evangelist, was going from place to place, and there was such interest that even the secular newspapers printed the transcript of his sermons. That was in, in the later 1800s. In the earlier 1800s, camp meetings were uh, very fashionable, and a a tremendous amount of the United States population attended camp meetings. It's stunning. I can't recall the exact uh, number, but uh, other than it was stunning, everyone did it. Well, you don't necessarily want to do what everybody does because uh, everybody nowadays has a different view of things. But it doesn't change... uh, the fact that one here, one there, uh, follows the Lord for the right reason. Amen. So we have the multitude, uh, including then the disciples, a different uh, element of that multitude. The Lord had called them fishermen, uh, some, and uh, tax collectors, uh, others. So they, the, the Lord just called them. 
And they responded. We don't see the accounts of the Lord saying to others, come, come follow me. And it's recorded that, specifically by name at least, they, they chose not to follow. But there were those that chose not to follow. But we're thankful for the disciples. Jesus went up to the mount. The, the Passover was nigh at hand, so the, these multitudes were obeying the, the law of Moses, which required adult males to go to Jerusalem three times a year, the Passover feast being one of them. This wasn't the last Passover where Jesus would be the lamb that was sacrificed. But this was an earlier one, and Jesus would, would go up that way, and the, this great company, this great multitude was on their way as well. But then Jesus looked, lifted up his eyes, we read, and he looks around and see all, sees all these people, and he knows they're hungry. Yeah. So why he asked Philip, uh, it's hard to say, but he did ask him, whence uh, shall we buy bread that these may, may eat? Well, Philip uh, was the, the one that had said to Nathaniel, when Philip told Nathaniel, we, we found the one of whom Moses and the prophets did write. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus of Nazareth. And Nathaniel replied, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip had the, the right answer. Come and see. Yeah. Check it out. And uh, so here we have uh, Philip saying uh, 200 penny worth of bread. It's not that they had 200 nairas, which wasn't very much money. It, they didn't have money. It's that even if we had that much, I don't know where he pulled that number out, out of the air, but he must have thought, well, that would at least go a little ways. But even at that, that wouldn't be enough. And so um, one of his disciples, Andrew, Peter's kind of absent, but Andrew's here today. Well, he wasn't necessarily absent, but usually Peter's the one who is impetuous and has uh, something uh, quick to say. So Andrew said, there's a lad here. So the lad is another component, another element of this account. And uh, Andrew had noticed. He, he brought lunch. Mm -hmm. He was planning to spend the day. Well, they were all planning, I guess, to spend the day, but uh, the rest of them didn't have a lunch. But this boy uh, had a lunch, and it wasn't much. Uh, five, five barley loaves, and it's not like the, the big loaves you, you buy of... Uh, at least that we buy and you can't eat it fast enough and, uh, nor should we so we freeze it and eat a slice at a time and uh, all of that they just you know I, I guess uh, what, what you could hand, hold in your little hand and two small fish so we're not talking about a great big salmon he caught on the Rogue River we're talking to uh, two little minnows that was lunch so there's another component but I think the one behind the scenes that I see is, is the mother of this lad who didn't, wasn't there that day, perhaps. But this mother, she, uh, she packed that lunch. What do mothers do when they, well, I don't know what mothers do nowadays when they pack their lunch, but you, you take care of this lunch. Yeah. And uh, you guard it. These are the days of thieves. So this lad, you know, he, ha he has his lunch. Yeah. I don't know what these... Kids do nowadays. Um, if, if, maybe they're taught to share their lunch. Some kids come to school, and I guess they get lunch at school. And um, but when when Jesus wanted his lunch, he didn't know Jesus. So a stranger says, "Bring me your lunch." And uh, the Lord knew that that lad, and the lad offered his lunch. Even though his mother had told him, that this is for you. You guard, I, I want you to come uh, home strong and, and all of that. But, you know, the, he, he gave him what he had. Yes. Amen. And, and that's all the Lord asks of any of us. Mm -hmm. You know, we see these little ones uh, singing, some not as little as others. And perhaps the littlest one uh, commanding the attention. But he's a lad here. Yeah. 
and he's, he's, he doesn't know he's giving glory to God, uh, perhaps, but uh, that's what he's doing. And we pray that these uh, children will grow up. And if Jesus tarries, be among those that will carry this thing forward. But whether you're a lad or a teen or a man or a woman, a, a young adult or a senior, that, that's, you're the one here. You're the one who the Lord has, has called to, to carry on uh, his work and to offer to him what he reaches into your heart to have. And most of us really, we, we don't have a lot. Some are very extraordinarily talented, I will say that, so I'm not making that assessment of anyone else. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, nobody asked me to sing a solo or play an instrument. In college, Oregon State, I, I tried to enroll uh, as an elective to, to learn piano, but I, I couldn't get it. The class was full. Otherwise, I might be back there instead of up here. Who knows? But you're here. There's one here. It wouldn't have mattered who, who it was right. if the Lord would have asked the adult to bring the lunch. Would the adult have been willing? To, now, wait a minute. They might have said, we might have said, now, wait a minute. What, why? Mm-hmm. We would have started asking questions. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to waste it? Uh, what is this lunch? How will that help anything at all today? And I'm hungry. But the lad, there's a lad here. Bring me your lunch. It doesn't, we don't know how it went, but the sense that we have is he didn't question. He didn't wonder. He just got up and handed the Lord the lunch. And the Lord, and the Bible is full of uh, illustrations of, of those who uh, responded to his call when, when young. We think of Samuel who three times felt that Eli had called him and ran to Eli. And finally, uh, Eli, the adult, had enough discernment, which he typically lacked, to tell him, next time you say, Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. heareth." And that's what Samuel did. And God uh, gave him a message. We think of that, actually, David. uh, We briefly mentioned uh, this morning. Uh, but also that m- little maiden who was serving Naaman's wife. Yeah. We don't even know her name. Yeah. But she ha- had something to offer. Amen. And that was a testimony. Amen. And it led to the healing of Naaman, the, the leper. Well, they, they divided up that lunch. I wonder if the disciples thought when the Lord told them to do that, they may have said, well, this won't take long. But it took a while. Yes. Sure did. 5,000 men besides women and children. And they began to distribute that lunch. Uh, people began to eat. And they were satisfied. They didn't waste. They p- collected 12 baskets uh, full of the remnants, more than uh, obviously what they had begun with. And the people were all excited. The multitude were, were excited for sure. They tried to make Jesus king. Well, ironically, the Lord wanted to be the king of their hearts, of their lives. He wants to be the king of your life. You've made him your king. You're subject to him. We are the Lord's subjects, but not in in the manner in which uh, kingdoms or subjects serve in most of the kingdoms of of this world, and, and nor have historically, why we are the aristocracy of heaven, we've heard it said. Because we serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I don't know if the Lord is calling for anything out of any hearts today. But we're here. And thank God, perhaps that was the call. And and that was the response uh, on our part. We came to serve the Lord, to encourage one another. And uh, we leave these uh, services uh, hopefully encouraged inspired, uh, determined to do what we can to uh, win souls for the kingdom and to live in a manner that encourages those around us to serve the Lord. Amen. So yes, there's, there's more than a lad here. There's, you're here. You are here. I am here. And may we uh, dedicate to God 
uh, anything he calls out of our hearts and out of our lives. May we uh, offer to him a determination to, to please him, to, to do difficult things. Nobody said it would be easy. and We're not asking for difficult things, but uh, difficult, difficulties come. Yeah, sure. it's, it's not, um, it's not a, we have picnics, but serving the Lord is not a picnic. Uh, but serving the devil is a disaster. But we don't serve the Lord to escape the disaster. We serve the Lord because we love him. He called us. We responded. And we say, Lord, I'm here. I'll, 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 I'll do my best. And that's all the Lord asks from any one of us. So let's look heaven's way. Give God thanks for the privilege to have been in the house of the Lord on this Lord's day.